How's it going everyone? It is Panjano here and Nvidia has just dropped a major update for the new Nvidia app, bringing some huge features into Nvidia's new version of what the Nvidia control panel and GeForce experience is merging into. In this video I'm going to be showcasing a few of the new features that you should definitely be checking out if they're available on your system, alongside showcasing how to get the app, how to update it and how to make the most out of it so you have all of the latest features available for your GPU that you can play around with and you should actually be able to see some performance improvements as there is now auto GPU tuning for nearly all GPUs. Stop paying full price for Windows today and get activated from as little as $16 using WhoKeys. Use the links in the description down below, choose from Windows 10, Windows 11 or Office Keys, add to checkout, use code PAN20 at checkout for an additional 25% off your order and to help support the channel, pay via a secure payment method including PayPal. Once purchased, your key will be available immediately, head over to activate Windows, paste the key, will then have access to all Windows features and no more watermark. The Windows 10 keys will also allow you to upgrade to Windows 11. Use the links in the description down below and a massive thanks to WhoKeys for sponsoring this video. If you installed the initial version of the NVIDIA app, to update it, all you'll need to do is right click on the NVIDIA logo down on the task icon tray and open the NVIDIA app. It should automatically go to apply the update, but if you're looking to install the app for the first time or manually update it, simply do a quick Google search for NVIDIA app and download the beta. To access the NVIDIA app at any time, take yourself to the task icon tray, click the up arrow, right click on the NVIDIA logo and select NVIDIA app. Alternatively, press the Windows button and search for NVIDIA. For an extremely quick overview for those of you not familiar with the NVIDIA app, this is the replacement for GeForce Experience and eventually the NVIDIA control panel where everything NVIDIA settings will be accessible, including shadow play, auto overclocking, alongside all of the features so you no longer have to have multiple applications to get the most out of your NVIDIA GPU. And the best part about all of this is it no longer requires a login. You can quickly and easily update your drivers at any time, utilizing the driver section on the left hand side, select the driver version you wish to install. Inside of the graphic settings for any detected games, you can set optimized NVIDIA settings if you want to set application specific settings like you would in the NVIDIA control panel, click on your game, scroll down to the driver settings where you can then set up your control panel settings for that specific game. You can also access the basic NVIDIA control panel settings from this tab by going over to global settings. Here you can find some brand new options which are available exclusively to the NVIDIA app such as RTX Dynamic Vibrance. From the description we can see that it boosts visual clarity for games utilizing AI. It's very similar to the old digital vibrance setting but this can be set on a per application basis and it helps to avoid color crushing, this should leave you with a much more vibrant image and a cleaner looking image. RTX HDR is a complete game changer, it's still relatively early and doesn't support multiple monitors yet but it's absolutely huge if you're looking for a auto HDR replacement and I would definitely look into this. You can also adjust the power modes, maximum frame rate, image scaling, vSync and your shader cache size all with inside of it. Heading over to the system tab, we can see an overview of your system specs alongside the brand new performance tab features the brand new GPU tuning tab. This is one of if not the biggest feature with inside of this update which should be available to most users and allows the Nvidia app to automatically tune your GPU for better performance. But not only this, you can actually adjust performance limits for your GPU with inside of it, which is massive. It allows you to adjust the voltage maximum percentage, power maximum percentage and set a temperature target. You can now adjust the fan speed target inside the official Nvidia software. So if you didn't want to install third party applications you no longer have to, you can actually adjust the fan speed target built in the actual software now. Last but not least, heading down to the settings panel where you can turn on or off the NVIDIA overlay, game filters and photo mode. So with a basic rundown of the new NVIDIA app out of the way, what features are new and what features should you be making use of? Starting off with arguably the biggest update to this, it's GPU tuning. Now this operates with inside of NVIDIA's own apps and it does state that it won't invalidate any warranty so you shouldn't have to worry about any options with inside of here if you adjust them. This will apply an automatic overclock to both your GPU core and your VRAM alongside testing it for you to do its best to ensure that it's a completely stable overclock even if it's relatively small. If you'd like to go ahead and do this for your system, all you need to do is click the on button on the right hand side. Throughout this process I would recommend closing out of any games and applications that are not required to be open. In some instances the automatic tuning may be interrupted. If this is the case it's more than likely because you're running something in the background that doesn't need to be open when you do this. Automatic overclock did take quite a while for my system. It may be quicker for you or it may even take longer. For the results for my RTX 4060 it's applied a 165 megahertz overclock to the GPU core and 200 megahertz to the VRAM. To me these seem like relatively safe numbers but at the end of the day that's what this is aiming to do to give you a very safe and reliable overclock that should work with practically everything that you do with minimal interruptions again if for any reason the automatic tuning is interrupted throughout the process double check that you have absolutely everything closed and that includes discord or anything that may have hardware acceleration because that will be accessing your gpu and could cause this to trip up 
On the screen now you can see results from my main two GPUs, an RTX 4090 and an RTX 4060, and two really quick basic benchmarks comparing these stock results to the automatic tuning results on both PCs, and you can see whether or not this is worthwhile doing for you. Seeming it's as easy as just clicking a button, go and do something else and come back and have free performance, it's a pretty decent update. If at any time you want to turn off the automatic tuning, you can switch it off utilizing this button, or if you would like to do the test again at another point and reset this back, just hit the restore button. The performance limit section. For me personally, I would use these sliders to reduce the overall power usage of your system and increase the performance per watt. The way that I would do this is I would take the power maximum percentage and I'd lower this to about 90%. For those of you on RTX 4080s or 4090s, you could potentially bring this down all the way to about 70% as that will reduce the overall power that the GPU is allowed to draw from, but because you're reducing the power, you're also reducing the temperature which will allow the GPU boost clock to maintain itself slightly higher, so you may find that you don't give up much performance but you see a drastic reduction to overall power usage. Obviously, on something super efficient like an RTX 4060, there may not be a massive benefit to doing this, but even just going with a 90% power limit could be a great way just to reduce that overall power draw and potentially increase the performance per watt. It's also worthwhile noting that the performance limits controls also limit the parameters of auto-tuning. So if you wanted to adjust any of the performance limiters, do this before selecting auto-tuning so auto-tuning can account for those limits that you've put in place. You don't have to set any performance limits, but they're there just in case you do. On the flip side of this, many GPUs support a higher than 100% power limit which allows the GPU to access more power when it's needed, allowing the GPU core clock to boost even further, potentially unlocking even more performance. For my RTX 4090 I'm able to go up to a 108% power limit, you may be able to go higher or lower than this. For the temperature limit target on nearly all GPUs I'd set this to the maximum, unless you're on a seriously small form factor system. But the most important feature with inside of it for everyone is going to be that fan speed target. Now I would recommend utilizing a third party application over this because you will get more fine tuned control, but having this built into the Nvidia app for those of you that don't want to do that is fantastic. So if you want your system to be ultra quiet all of the time and limit its performance to achieve that, you can do so. Or alternatively, if you just care about the flat out best performance possible and you don't mind how loud your GPU can get, you could set this up to about 80% or even all the way up to 100. I'll be doing a more extensive video on the GPU tuning utility alongside performance limits coming soon to the channel. So if you would like to dive deeper into this to find settings you should utilize for your GPU without having to utilize third party applications like MSI Afterburner, make sure that you are subscribed to the channel to stay notified as soon as that video goes live. Another note on performance limits, more specifically towards the power limit percentage, this can be adjusted live at any time. You do not have to rerun the auto OC scan. Anytime you adjust the slider for the power limit, it will be applied instantly the moment you let go of it. So if you're playing a particular game and you quickly want to reduce the power draw, jump into the Nvidia app, reduce the power draw down, tap back into your game, you'll immediately then see that change. There's also been some enhancements to the Nvidia overlay alongside some new statistics which are measurable with inside of your game. To access this at any time, simply press Alt and Z on your keyboard. You can alternatively access the overlay by clicking this button at the desktop inside of the NVIDIA app. Inside of the NVIDIA overlay, one of the best quality of life features to come with this update is the fact that you no longer have to press Alt and Z or Escape to close out of the overlay. You can simply just drag your mouse over to the game window and click. If you're new to the NVIDIA app with this update, you'll also notice that there's a complete refresh to the NVIDIA in-game overlay. It's a lot more cleaner. One of the new features which is available can be found down in the statistics section, which is the on-screen overlay. I'd recommend switching this on, going down to configure heads up display where you can adjust where the on-screen display is on the screen and adjust the orientation of the metrics in which you're looking at. Heading back, you have a few different statistic view presets which you can select from, such as FPS, Basic, Advanced, and Custom. And under the Custom section, we now have the new option to monitor the GPU power draw. This is a fantastic way to see the amount of power that your GPU is pulling in any of your favorite games to get a more detailed rundown of your overall FPS within inside of the game and the power draw on the GPU. Alongside this, if you go down to View All, you also have a ton more options which you can monitor with inside of this, meaning that you no longer really have to utilize third-party applications to get a detailed rundown of everything that your system's doing inside of all of your favorite games. And you can enable or disable the in-game overlay at any time, selecting Alt and R on your keyboard. For one of the biggest feature updates that NVIDIA Shadowplay has ever seen, we now have support for multiple codecs, including AV1, and the ability to also record up to 120 FPS on many GPUs, even if AV1 isn't supported. Simply press Alt and Z, go to the top right to the settings cog, then navigate down to video capture. If you wish to capture desktop or if certain games aren't being recorded in full screen mode, you can select this option. You can adjust 
adjust the length of instant replays if you have these enabled with inside of this section as well. But the main settings we're looking for for the update is the output format. We have a few different presets which you can select from, but I'm going to be heading over to custom. Set your resolution to anything you wish to do so. Frame rate. Instead of just having options for 30 and 60, for many GPUs you'll now also find the option for 120 FPS recordings, which is fantastic, especially for those of you looking to do slow motion in some of your clips. And this isn't exclusive to AV1, so some older GPUs may also support this. You'll also see that it's currently utilizing H.264 slash HEVC. And for supported GPUs, you can have everything recorded in AV1. AV1 is a new, much more efficient video codec, which offers so many benefits over H.264 and HEVC. Many of its benefits are typically found utilizing lower bit rates. The higher you go, many of those benefits kind of taper off as the quality gets good on pretty much all of the available codecs. But where AV1 is absolutely huge is it's so much more efficient on bit rate usage, which for those of you that like to capture instant replays utilizing Alt F10 inside of your games, you'll get a huge visual quality bump alongside utilizing less file space on your system. Regardless of which codec you go with, whether it's H.264 slash HEVC or AV1, depending on your GPU, you may also be able to set an even higher bitrate limit, which will give you better quality recordings at the expense of higher disk usage. For this RTX 4060, I'm only able to set this up to 150 megabit per second, which is basically good enough for everything anyway, but my RTX 4090 on all codecs is able to go up to 250. So depending on your use case, whether you're looking for super high quality recordings and you don't mind about the file space, do play around with the bitrate. But if you're just wanting to set up the recording tab just to utilize those instant replays, I'd set this down to about 30 or 20 megabits, keep it at 60 FPS, utilize AV1 if available, set the resolution to utilize in-game, this should look absolutely fantastic, for quick and easy shareable recordings utilizing those instant replays. Some other features that are available in the previous update to the Nvidia app, but will be new to most users jumping over for the first time, go back to the settings menu and go to files and disk space. Inside of here you can adjust the temporary file location and where you want your Nvidia recordings to be saved to, but more importantly one of the new features is actually a disk space limit. This limit will be applied to the gallery location where all of your Nvidia recordings will be saved to, and if you enable it you can actually set how much of that drive the Nvidia recordings can take up. And a really good quality of life feature in my opinion is that you can actually watch back your clips inside of your game or from the Nvidia overlay. If you press Alt and Z go to the top to the gallery and double click this will automatically play that clip that you just recorded without having to exit the game at all. So with all of the features of this Nvidia app update covered let me know of your favorite features that have come out and what features you're looking forward to in that comment section down below and if you enjoy content like this and would like to watch more check out the playlist section in the description down below or alternatively check out one of the two videos on screen and I'll see you guys over there.